Hi, I'm Christina Brungart. I'm one of the lecturers for art history, and one of the things I work on is art and politics, and the movie scenes are actually gonna make sense in a minute. Most people think this is what we do as art historians. <laughs> paintings, sculptures, actually I don't look at paintings and sculptures. This is what my daily job usually looks like. <laughs> Trapped, arbitrary rules, ghosts, hunting, and hopefully a little magic to find what I'm looking for. So what am I looking for and why? Well, one thing is I have to look in a lot of different places. I usually work on the East Coast, West Coast, and predominantly I'm doing a lot of research online with Russia. I go to Germany a lot and Italy. So I get to travel to some really beautiful archives, but this is not how nice they are on the inside, unfortunately. The reason why I'm going to Russia, Italy, and Germany is actually I look at these handsome gentlemen, Mussolini, Stalin, and Hitler. These gentlemen were friends with artists and actually took a lot of their ideas, borrowed them, and used art programming as one of their major, thank you, major um, motives for their work. So each one of them had brand new government regimes. They had been written about in theory but had never been seen in practice. So what they needed to do is sell it to the masses. So they trademarked. They came up with different ideas of logos and they thought, how can I reach the masses? And this is when they look at artists. These are some of my favorites, Lizitsky, Soroni, Bea. Artists had been thinking about this for a while. Artists had been thinking about how do you make the world interested, rebuild it in a new world. And so they were constructivists. They just believed they can construct a whole new world for the masses. But for them, they're not interested in art in the sense of painting and sculpture. They're interested in everyday mass art. So one of the things I have to look at is how they created art. And that means I look at journals, newspapers, architecture, and a lot of movies. So, I know, people are always like, movies? Um, the reason why is one of the first major policies it, that they came up with was Lenin. He is the father of them all in this. He said cinema is the most powerful art form. So one of the things that each and every one of these people did, Mussolini, Stalin, Lenin, and Hitler, is they actually funded the very first major film studios for each of those countries. If ever you've watched a Scorsese film, it's been filmed at Mussolini's Cinecita in Italy, it's fantastic, you can go visit it. He believed that if you can reach the masses, it's a great trapped audience. Look at yourselves right now. <laughs> you must look at the beautiful object. That's actually what they were thinking about. This is an idea that was developed by artists from the Bauhaus and also the Hutmus in Russia. So each of their films are really interesting because they're all designed to show elements of their kind of work and style. This is Russia, they're actually taking communism to Mars here. Fantastic. <laughs> Italy, the Italian countryside becomes fascist together. They leave the old way behind. And of course, Germany, the rise of the Aryan race. So each one of them, the first thing that they instituted is actually a ministry of propaganda and culture. They believed that they really needed to touch everything. So in this touching of everything, they also believed, hey, world, you've never seen communism and fascism. So they started to export it. And they exported it in really interesting ways. They did expositions. Normally they sent things like cars, camera lenses. This is actually stuff that they sent to this exhibition. They also sent fleets of artists with them. So when you look in these rooms, what's fascinating is you start seeing really high-end art. That was actually for you as a visitor, not for the people in their own country. In their own country, they were trying to reach them through typography, posters, films, things that were very local. Another way that they tried to reach people was through buildings, architecture and magazines that told people about architecture. Because how many of you walked in a building today? <laughs> That's a great way to reach a lot of people. When you're floating through Europe, you're gonna walk into a lot of buildings and you're gonna actually see signs over your head telling you empowerment of the worker. It's really fascinating. So they thought that you were a trapped audience when you'd walk into a building and they could actually indoctrinate you into their theories. So they would often try and convince you. They also would make it so interesting for you that you would also see the policies. For example, Russia, this is community housing. Little do you know, you share a bathroom. Hitler was trying to give you the new Greek revival of Germany. And this is Italian Mussolini's last major project telling you about Italian culture and civilization. Fascinatingly, notice how they all mix really incredible ideas of modernism designed by the Bauhaus and they change it to meet their own cultural needs, to promote their new ideas. We also see it in things like poster and book design. Photo montage is huge. I have to look at photography. 
Why? Because photography is the most easily mechanically reproduced thing at the time. So they get a lot of artists to come in and create these different things. These artists were all big supporters of their government regimes. One of the things you're also probably noticing is some of this stuff looks really similar. These are from completely different countries. This is from Italy, this is from Russia. Communism was banned in Italy. Fascism is banned in Russia. So how are they communicating? And why does it look so similar? They have different agendas, but there's a lot of artists communicating with each other. And this is actually where I jump in. I like to look at how artists talk, how they travel, how they move around. So this looks really interesting. It looks like something designed by the Bauhaus. It's actually an Italian graphic design company. Reason why? Hitler kicked out all the Bauhaus artists and they came down to Italy and decided to design for new advertising firms there. So there's sometimes very direct routes. Other times, it's very indirect. They steal, because artists, good ones, steal from each other. This is an Italian building. This was featured in an architectural journal. He took it. Am I at my time? Okay. okay. So I'm going to skip this one, because it's photo montage. Sometimes they do it subversively, and I love a subversive artist. It's actually what I focus on. So this is an Italian journal. This is actually a subversive communist artist that was hunted in three different countries. <laughs> Notice, this isn't a pretty journal. It's actually a subversive critique against the Italian government, just as you're flipping through a nice, pretty magazine. So people want to know why I think this is important now. Anybody read the news about Fendi? They just bought a brand new headquarters. It's this. <laughs> For me, that's really fascinating because the fascist regime actually controlled the fashion industry back in the day. So some people are very critical of Fendi's recent purchase of this building because it brings up a really bad past. So that's why I study art politics, because I'm running out of time and they're going to kick me out. So, thank you.